Okay, I want to take a second today to talk about something that I've run across a few times in the last month or so. And uh, it, it has to deal with prepping. And I don't want to become, make this, right off the bat, I want to make sure that this doesn't come down as, uh, as sounding like I'm coming down on uh, preppers in any way, because I'm not. I also don't want it to sound like I'm coming down on homeschoolers, because I'm not. Uh, but I've run into, I've been dealing more and more with some people that are into prepping, like people that are selling uh, prepping supplies at gun shows, uh, people that I've met on the internet, just asking some questions. And I've run into this four or five times at least, where they keep talking about how they're prepping their children to survive when things go bad. And, uh, and I've run into that more times than four or five, but there's four or five times I've run into a specific scenario where they're training their kids, they're putting a lot of emphasis on teaching their kids to hunt, to grow foods, to you know purify water, to do all these things like this. And then I'll ask, you know, and then during the college conversation, things come up like, uh, well, how well do they do in school? And they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. You know, I'm like, well, you know, you got to be concerned about that. And especially some of the ones that I've seen that are like, well, we're homeschooling our kid, and I'm like, oh, uh, what kind of curriculums do you use for science and, and, and math? And they're like, well, we do the minimum, and we know, yeah, blah, 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 and the testing is blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I don't know. I'm very familiar with the homeschooling system. I know how people get around the minimum testing, and I know how people get around the minimum standards. Uh, when you see a lot of statistics about home testing, a friend of mine works for the State Department that does a lot of the uh, evaluations of home testing, and she will tell you that most of the kids who do home graduate homeschooling never graduate, even though they try to say that the majority, they, they twist numbers and say, oh, well, 55% of all homeschool graduates go on to college and only 49 of uh, regular graduates go on to college. Yeah, but they fail to mention that a vast majority more people that actually go through high school graduate than go through homeschooling. Now, they do twist the numbers to make it look like more people who go through homeschooling actually graduate, but then if you really look into the state numbers, they actually underreport dropouts greatly. They estimate like 80% of all dropouts are underreported or they're reported as transfers and not dropouts. So it's just to promote the whole homeschool system. And it's not really regulated or governed so the, the reporting of the statistics, so there's no way to really know the truth and the only sources of the information are the actual homeschooling institutions. So, homeschooling is not as successful as people like to think it is. But if you are qualified and you do teach your kids at home, it can be a very good thing, but you have to remember, prepping for an inevitable disaster, or not inevitable, but a possible disaster, while ignoring the need for your kids to be prepared to live in the world that already exists, is such a disservice. I mean, that is a big prepping failure. It doesn't do any good to teach your kid to survive a hypothetical apocalypse if they're not prepared to deal with the way the reality of the way things are really in the world. Uh, like I've talked to them about computers and advanced math and advanced science and they're not really interested in that. And I'm like, well, so what you're saying to me is you're preparing your kid that if the world uh, comes to a societal collapse, they'll be able to survive on their own, but you're almost certainly condemning them to working in a gas station if it doesn't happen. And, you know, and that to me just seems like the biggest failure I've ever seen for prepping. You think your main goal in prepping would not only be preparing for potential disaster, but being prepared for what happens if that disaster doesn't come. And that means, you know, you don't run out and spend all your money on canned foods and then not be able to pay your rent. Does that make any sense? You don't teach your kids to hunt fish. Toil, uh, you know, till the soil and not teach them to thrive in today's economy. Uh, so uh, it just it just angers me to see these people that like that are considering themselves preparing for something and they're doing their children such a disservice. And it, it's just really been eating at me. And if you're one of those people, I would just ask you to step back and think. I'm preparing my kid for something that might happen. So well, what is the chances of it? Let's say 10% maybe. You know, some people might say, well, it's 50% chance. But even if it is. You're ignoring the other 50% or you're ignoring the other 90% of the chance that they're going to have to get out of school and function in everyday society. And, and, I've, and I knew a couple of them. Uh, there's this one guy that sells stuff at the gun show and his kids are just strange. They're homeschooled. They're, they act like little wild wolf children when you're there. I mean, he has them sometimes behind his booth and they're just weird. They kind of creep you out. They're like children of the corn. And I'm like, do you really think you're, and I'm sure every, I'm sure both of, all, all three of his kids, I'm sure they can all uh, hunt, fish, uh, grow their own food. I'm sure every, the, all three of them will be able to do that perfectly. But as far as surviving in normal society, I just, mm, I'm real questionable about what they're going to be able to do that, along those lines. But that's just my topic today. Uh, just this whole mentality of, prepare for the worst and the worst only, it just ignores the reality so much. And that's when you start to become disconnected and you start to be considered extreme. 
so I'm just hoping most preppers don't do that. And I don't think most preppers do, but there's just some out there, and I'm sure every prepper out there knows someone like this, that they spend their entire time building a bunker while they're letting their house fall down. Or they spend their whole time stocking food on the shelves while they don't have adequate uh, things they need for everyday life. You know, they're, they're, they're driving a car that's not reliable, yet they've got 50,000 pounds of beans in the, on the shelf in the garage. So, you know, just use some common sense, use some uh, mathematics, you know, just figure out what your statistics are, what your odds are. And remember, you can't ignore one for the other. You have to realize, okay, if I'm prepared for things to go bad, I have to be prepared if things don't go bad too. So I would just like to see more of that in the prepping community, more people showing how they're also prepared. You know, they're preparing their kids to live in a world where society doesn't collapse as well as living in a world where society does collapse.